Thank you guys. I really appreciate this. This is awesome. Okay. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> the first question, the first question is from brother Jeremiah Loudonfat, although he can't be here because he's in the Philippines, which is a non-extradition company country. And um, he's currently evangelizing some lady boys there. Anyway, um, <laughs> he asks on the song Mission, um, there is a preacher that talks about um, a Cadillac dealership uh, giving the guy a brand new Cadillac from God. Uh, where specifically is that dealership and are they still open and are they still gullible? Do you know? <laughs> Sure, they're gullible. I don't know where, where it is, though. <laughs> tell us about that one, Ty. That was kind uh, of the only one. I can, I can tell you how you find out where it's, uh, where it's at. Um, it's from the movie Marjo. So you can find that exact clip. And if you do, you'll know what church and what town and whatever. Cool. The movie Marjo. Excellent. Yep. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> That's perfect. Question number two. Um. The My Pillow creator Mike Lindell is kind of falling on hard times. I wonder, has he ever approached you about an endorsement deal about using your song Pillow to endorse his My Pillow? Because the, the lyrics we, would kind of fit. Um, we've been trying to get him to, we've been trying to get him to, but he hasn't bit yet. He hasn't bit. Um, yeah. May, you know, if you feed him something, I think he'll probably believe it. He's uh, you know, such a huge conspiracy theory guy. And I'll actually oh, talk about a pillow conspiracy theory later. Somebody anyway. post that on my pillow. Post, yeah. put, put that song up there. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be good. Okay. Also, your first album, Out of the Silent Planet, was released in 1988. Your second album, Gretchen Goes to Nebraska, was released in 1989. Later in the fall of 1989, the Berlin Wall fell. Do you think that King's X will ever get the respect that you are due for single-handedly defeating communism? <laughs> no. <laughs> we will never get anything due. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> That's right. we have, even if we were responsible, no one would know it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's a perfect answer, Ty. Okay. <laughs> well, I think you're all American heroes, so maybe somebody will give you a medal at some point. Um, your self-titled album was your fourth album. Does that mean for your first three albums, you were kind of iffy on the name, King's X? Or were you thinking maybe you'll change it? I think, I think maybe it was just laziness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they forgot to put the name on it. And we just said, oh, well, whatever. Just, okay. just leave it. Just leave it. <laughs> Did you not just come up, not come up with the title for that album or? We actually had more than one title, uh, one title that has been with us forever that we've never used since Hector was a pup. And uh, I think we've claimed certain albums were going to be called that ahead of time and then never did it. Uh, actually, on, on that fourth one, I don't really know what, I don't even remember the real answer other than I think we just thought the picture said enough. Mm. You know? That is a very cool picture. Yeah. Yeah. I had thought about Zeppelin IV, and that was why I pushed it, the yeah. idea. That was very cool. Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> of all the people that King's X has worked with, who's your favorite, and why is it Wally Farkas? <laughs> <laughs> Who else? You know, that, might, that actually may be my, my real answer. I love working with Wally. Always have. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. I, Who else? I think so, too. There's no one else I'd work with in the capacity of anything but Wally. You know, there's other people yeah. around, but, you know, when it comes to just about jack of all trades, he's got to call. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. He's a terrific guy. 
I mean, seriously. <laughs> yeah. Who, who else? Can you think of other people? I've always oh. enjoyed working with Ty and Doug. Well, yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Um, you think you might stick around with him a while? Well, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yet, that's yet to be determined. Yeah. Until, until somebody better shows up. Yeah. <laughs> I've been waiting well, how, how many years now? 40 years? Yeah. Don't wait, man. Keep on waiting, man. It's gonna happen, man. It's gonna happen. Uh, yeah. It's gonna do happen. It for, do it for Johnny. Do it for Johnny. <laughs> okay. Influences. Who's been the bigger influence on you and your music? This is a multiple choice question. A Morgan Cryer. B Sly and the Family Stone. C, the Beatles, or D, Crunchy. Uh, Morgan, Morgan Cryer. Morgan Cryer. <laughs> okay. I actually, do remember you being on his shoulders in one concert once. I actually really love Morgan. He's great and he's awesome. Yeah. yeah. The first time I ever saw you guys, you were his band, and it was some outdoor concert somewhere. And there was a keyboard player working with you guys. And the keyboards went down. And the reason I remembered you guys was because the three of you, you just started playing um, the Andy Griffith theme song. Oh, wow. And you, you started rocking out on it. And I was like, this is awesome. These guys are terrific. <laughs> and that, that's why I remember that concert. Wow. Um, it was a big festival kind of thing. That was back like in 86 or something. Um, mm -hmm. So that was really cool. Okay. Also, another multiple choice question. What is your favorite Beatles song? Is it A, Tomorrow Never Knows, B, A Day in the Life, or C, While My Guitar Gently Weeps? All of the above. I, I think it's uh, Jumping Jack Flash. My favorite Beatle tune. Uh, I thought that was a Beach Boys. Oh, that's right. That is the Beach Boys. I'm sorry. Get it together. Ty. I guess I guess I don't like the Beatles. <laughs> Doug? Yeah. I love them, but I don't remember any of those songs. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll have to go back and now I personally I, I think all those I think all those are wrong. I think the best <laughs> Beatles song is everybody's got something to hide except for me and my monkey. That would probably that be one. my favorite. That would I be my favorite. I absolutely love that song. Cowbell is so loud all the way through. It's awesome. <laughs> oh, but the lyrics. That's yeah. my favorite. Everybody got something. Now, uh, me and my uh, monkey. Uh, oh, yeah. my God. What a what a amazing thing to say. There, well, everything they did was amazing. So Yeah, that's true. No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> No one. <laughs> I know you guys love them. Uh, number, okay, next question. Another multiple choice question, and you could come up with your own answer if you want. Which will destroy the earth first? The climate crisis, the return of the Anunnaki and aliens, or C, the ultimate pillow contingency? This is the pillow <laughs> thing. Um, I understand that there is a theory that at some point, all of the stereos in the world will be turned all the way up and somehow your song, Pillow, will begin to play at the same time on all the stereos with everything turned all the way up and that will loosen the tectonic plates of the earth and cause us all to die because of the huge bass that you have at the beginning of that song. So um, what's gonna destroy the earth? Well, that may yeah, that may be the way the, that may be the way that the Anunnaki choose to do it. Yes, that's yeah. probably how. Yeah. <laughs> Good answers, Ty. Yeah, yeah. I actually uh, recorded a book for uh, about the Anunnaki. I I narrate books for Audible, so um, it's kind of a thing around my house with my sons. We're always talking about the Anunnaki. It's my religion. <laughs> okay, gotcha. It really is. Doug has taught us much about the Anunnaki. Yeah. 
Yeah. I went down that fucking rabbit hole hard. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you watched Ancient Aliens and everybody? Oh, everything. Have everything. You read, have you <laughs> read the books by Maximilian de Lafayette? I don't know what I read. I just read it. If it okay. says Anunnaki and the Sky Gods, I'm down that hole. I don't remember a lot. I just It just goes into my brain. It is very <laughs> interesting. I got to tell you. Jesus. Yeah, it'll, it, it'll save you. <laughs> you used to, you used to say like it was giving you big revelations about things in the Bible, but making it making the understanding be completely different. It brought me back to the belief in the Bible because of everything that I learned with Anunnaki. You, you could under, you could correlate okay. it with what happened, and then I, you make sense. All the questions that I had in the Bible. About that doesn't make sense. And God, why, why, why? Now I get it. It was a fucking alien. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it all makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> That's that is an explanation for a, a lot of it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Next question. You guys have been a band in one form or another since like 1980. Is that right? Mm -hmm. right? Can you name something else that has stayed together since 1980? No. You too. You too, yeah. Oh, you yeah, too. yeah. Sorry. ZZ, ZZ Top until Dusty died. Yeah. ZZ Top, yeah. Yep. The only yeah. other, th other one I could come up with was the Rolling Stones. But they're not. Yeah, but original. they're the originals. Yeah. That's right. Because, yeah, and, and um, I Charlie Watts people. just died. I ask these people this question a lot also, and they we, and we can't find a, a band, a three-piece band. I'm told we're right. the last three-piece. I've heard people yeah. say that Zebra. They're still a, together, aren't they? I believe so. I've heard people say that. Wow, good. Mm -hmm. That's great. Is Triumph still together? I, I was know. wondering that, too. They may be. I don't yeah. know. Hmm. Okay, number 10. I Next guess question. we're not special. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you guys are incredibly special, and you know, no one's no one's special. All have fallen short of the glory of God. That, that is correct. correct. That is true. We all know that aliens exist, but why are they so <laughs> obsessed with beans? What's the deal with <laughs> aliens and beans? It's the flatulence odor that they love. It gives <laughs> it gives them empowerment. This is true. They hang around the gaseous. Okay. Excellent. Does that have anything to do with uh, with with Xenu and and the <laughs> volcanoes and <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, next question. Have <laughs> any of you ever actually stained yourself with pumpkin pie? I could say I probably spilled some pumpkin pie on me in my day. Okay. Just by eating it, it kind of like falling off the spoon or something. You never know. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just a, it's just a metaphor of many things. <laughs> right. Right. It's one of those wonderful lyrics. <laughs> it really is. Okay. Next question. You have been credited... With Inventing Grunge by Jeff Ament of Pearl Jam, among others. And you are clearly a huge influence to many musicians. Some even say you have become legends, and I'm one of them. So, why did you make Ego cry on the bus that one time? Because <laughs> he's a fucking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody will now know why one of us got murdered <laughs> <laughs> with a <the> now, cleat <laughs> yeah I have no idea what happened but it must have been a huge misunderstanding I mean yeah, you know, yeah. We're, not, we're not mean people and he's not a mean person so exactly and that was what 20 years ago or something <laughs> What? When? When did that happen? Anyway, I don't, I don't even. Know Jesus, what. fuck! I'm so old. I don't remember that. Forty yeah, years ago? What? <laughs> I stay away from that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, 
I believe you once said in an interview, Jerry, fuck the fans. Is that, is that what you said in an interview no, once? I no, wasn't in an interview on those lines. Okay. <laughs> I think the fucking fans. The fucking fans, yes. Okay, that was it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Jerry would never <laughs> say anything like that. No. It's a completely different kind of fan. But yes, exactly. Okay. Th I have three questions. Um, one for each of you individually. Uh, Doug, and these are like from fans. Doug, <clears throat> is the Mohawk ever going to make a comeback? Yeah, I found this place that make fake uh, wigs, and yeah. they can glue glue one on my head. So get ready, guys. Oh, uh, everything's going retro. That'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm looking forward no. to seeing that. <laughs> That's never gonna happen. I'm gonna I'm gonna be sporting a reverse mohawk. I'm gonna just shave right down the middle, and that's gonna be my deal. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> that will be awesome. Awesome. Grandpa with a mohawk. No. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, a question for you. All right. <laughs> I heard that with your band in New Jersey, that you actually played Paul McCartney's birthday party once. Is that true? That is not true. It's not true. But I did play with Paul McCartney. You did? Okay. Yeah. Well, I was, it was told. Someone else's. It, it was someone it was somebody else's. else's. It was somebody else's party. It wasn't a birthday party, but it was like a. Like an after summer party. Okay. At John Bon Jovi's house in the Hamptons. Okay. And Paul McCartney was there. Yes, and he camped and jammed with us. <clears throat> along awesome. with along with Billy Joel, Jimmy Buffett, John Bon Jovi, and Roger Waters. And Bruce Springsteen. Bruce Springsteen. Hello, there. Bruce Springsteen. Springsteen. Well, he was there, but he didn't get up on stage with us. Uh, oh, oh, you played that Christmas I played thing with Bruce. Early. I oh, played with him. Wow. Jerry. Now, my understanding is you? that after you played, that Paul McCartney told you that you're a very good drummer. His, his exact words with me are, were, you're a good drummer. Keep it up. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Yep. Now, when he said that to you, mm -hmm. did you pee your pants just a little bit or did you just empty everything into your pants at once? Because that's uh, what I would have done. Well, I actually, when I was talking to him, it wasn't like I was talking to Paul McCartney. It's like I was just talking to this guy, but he happened to be Paul McCartney. Yeah. He was very, very easy to talk to, very friendly. He invited me to sit with him and talk with him. And he was telling me old Beatles stories and all kinds of different things. I go on and on about it. And at one point he said, you know, you're a good drummer, keep it up. And I went back and told the other guys in the band and uh, the bass player at that point said, if he had said that to me, I would go out immediately and get cards that say, Paul McCartney said, I'm a good drummer. Keep it up. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's just really, told, really just cool. Told. That's got to have meant a lot to you over the years since, since that happened. Oh, it, it was an incredible experience in all, you know, you know. Yeah. Realness. Yeah. That's kind of like a, a career moment. That you go, yeah. I remember afterwards, I'm, uh, we were hanging out up by his, uh, by John Bon Jovi's, on his patio or whatever it was. Yeah. And he said to us, he said, what higher pinnacle of our careers is there than the fact that we just play with Paul McCartney? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay, Ty, <clears throat> question for you. Gotta go. So <laughs> many people have asked about how you get your tone. And it's a distinct part of your playing. Aspiring guitarists are incessantly asking about what kind of setup you have, your pedals, your tunings, your interfaces, and all this stuff, your gear. Would you like to take this opportunity to tell them all that you're just playing better than they are and that they are just, <laughs> would you, they just please stop bugging you about it? <laughs> I just say go out and get a pig nose it'll do just fine <laughs> okay <laughs> we actually did a show with a pig nose and, but it wasn't me playing through it we used to have a fourth member actually yeah. two other fourth members the first one was Dan McCullum and then my old friend from Mississippi came up Kirk Henderson yeah. and 
we had a show at a very big place one night and uh, you know we didn't get to play big shows opening for somebody in like at a you know in a theater you know yeah. for a lot of people and we had one of those shows one night and the day of the show kirk sold his marshals and bought a, a beat up car that would barely run uh, the day of the show, I mean, you know, instead of waiting one day. So we didn't even know what he was going to play through. We literally got up on stage in front of all these people, and he played through a small pig nose sitting in a chair, mic'd on the stage. It was hilarious. <laughs> all right. And we rocked. <laughs> and it sounded killer. It did. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it did, as you always do. Okay, this is, this is one sort of serious question um and i've never really heard it asked um but all throughout your writing and your songwriting in the albums you've done as king's x one of the major themes that runs through your catalog is what i would call spiritual deconstruction running all <laughs> the way through everything um songs such as getaway a box, looking for love, I don't know, we were born to be loved, move me, run, what I know about love, and dozens more. They all contain the subject matter where it seems that the singer-songwriter, you're dealing with a transition in spiritual life and thinking. And um, I don't want to get into the CCM stuff because that's been beaten to death, but can you talk about spiritual deconstruction and how that has formed um, your life and your 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 music and how that's played out for you in your career. No, when you when you brainwash, <laughs> it takes years. It takes years to unbrainwash yourself. Yeah, and many 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 things happen if you truly want to be unbrainwashed or whatever you want to call it. And yeah. so the, these songs are all um, little pills of brainwashing unbrainwashing i'm saying yep. um and you know that's basically really that's what it was you know to the point where you know you can tell yeah call it deconstruction yeah um, I, I know a lot of people and i'm working with a lot of people who are deconstructing um their their faith and what they grew up in and um religious abuse is a real deal it's a real thing you know and um i'm i'm deconstructing my own relationship to the church and um it's a long period to go through and it's a tough thing to do but it's really important work and i think that your stuff which is so brutally honest um has really helped a lot of people with that so i applaud that and i, I thank you for that um, in fact, I've even referred to Getaway um, off of Ogre Tones as a psalm, because I really think it is. It's very much like a psalm, one of the, like, the imprecatory psalms, but it's a, it's just a really, it's a gutsy song, so I appreciate that. Bless you. Oh, bless you guys. <laughs> You've been doing the blessing. Um, oh, Okay. So what about future plans for you guys? I know at some point with the COVID thing, once that's done, you'll probably tour. But what else? I mean, have you got side projects lined up? Any more things on the calendar for you guys as King's X? What's in store that you can share? Lots of stuff. <laughs> It's okay. always stuff. Right? Right, guys? <laughs> sure. I sure. mean, first of all, we have an album, a new album. And by the time it comes out, it'll be the first one in like around 14 years or so. Yeah. Uh, and um, we're still tweaking around on, on that a tiny bit in the mastering to get it to the last thing. But it's done and it's ready to go. We have uh, ideas already that, you know, we're, we're not going to talk about them yet. But lots of stuff in the works and everything is uh, foot to the pedal to get that done and uh, it'll be released when it's when it's ready and um, and we will tour when the world is ready 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah when it's safe. Cause we don't, don't need any of you guys getting COVID. I mean, that's, yeah. uh, it's, that's dang, it's dangerous. So I want you guys to say, stay safe. And um, I know you got blues grinder coming up. You got a thing with them. Uh, it's grinder blues. Grinder blues. I'm yeah, sorry. I reversed out, them. Dyslexic. It'll be out. It'll be out the 25th. Cool. Excellent. Ty's got Ty's, a solo album coming too, don't you, Ty? Yeah, I got a solo album coming out November 26th. Oh, you got a date on yours. Yeah, mine's Black coming Friday. out. Mine's coming out in September, uh, October, but I don't have a date yet. Oh yeah, cool. Okay. Yeah, so we're we're gonna bombard everybody with some. I I always say it's it's like dessert and appetizers are coming, and then <laughs> okay. the main the main meal will be here. It's gonna take a while. Think French. Okay, because because okay. uh, I've heard Ty's record and it's one of my favorite records. I play it all the time. I still do Ty. I'd never tell you that because you don't tell your brothers and sisters <laughs> that you like what they do. <laughs> you know, but, uh, that record, Jerry. You got to hear it. It's really fucking good. You have another okay. record coming out, Jerry? Eventually, I will. Yeah, I have to record it and write the songs and do all that. But yeah. Okay. <laughs> yep. and i and i have a solo record coming out and then grinder blues we got a couple video those word videos coming out so so there's a there's more than enough stuff for people to to sink into that are into all this you know but uh the king's x will come and i you know ah, we're so happy Excellent. about it <laughs> well, guys. I, actually do, I actually do this thing called meat hook where i talk to people on the phone and I'm, I'm talking with this one guy, and we're actually writing songs together. He's in California. I'm in New Jersey. Oh, that's I, cool. That's be really, really cool. Yeah, very cool. Excellent. Yeah, it's gonna be great. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Oh, I, I should also give props to uh, Joel Osteen because he's allowed me to come to you from his bathroom today. Uh -huh. <laughs> Joel Osteen's bathroom. <laughs> so um, I thank him. T I thought Tell you were at Heritage Village. Oh, tell Joel to send me some like uh, real scanty pictures. You know, he's hot. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what he does, you know, but he just looks like he's 18. You know, he's just like, whoa, what's going on here? Yeah, he, he, he's, he's tight. He's got those teeth. Mm -hmm. Perfect, he looks, <laughs> he looks, perfect hair. He, he reminds me of a grown up alfalfa. <laughs> you know, all he needs is that hair to stand straight up. Yeah. Do you like alfalfa, Doug? I loved alfalfa, oh, but I was alfalfa's age at the time, too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. And by the way, we, we met Spanky in a hotel in L.A. at a convention That's right. those dudes. It was awesome. Did you really? <laughs> really <laughs> did. Really did. I got to sit there and talk with him. It was killer. Was I there, Ty? I have no idea, Jerry. I don't, I don't remember that at all, yeah. I, I vaguely they, remember we, that. There was a convention, uh, a Little Rascals convention, and they were all staying at the same hotel as us. And I just happened to come through the lobby when they were all standing out there. And I was, oh. and, I, and I heard somebody say something, and I, was, I turned around like, you got to be kidding. So I just walked right over in the middle of them, started talking. It was great. <laughs> <That's how it's laughs> the time King's X met Spanky. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a good song. <laughs> Meeting Spanky. That sounds like a good instrumental title we that could, could do anything we could talk for hours about people we've met and the stories oh. that have never been told yeah yep yeah yep, but no i appreciate your time gentlemen thank you very much You're i welcome. hope this interview thank hasn't you. been a drain on you so, it's fun good fun. good well not all of our hopes and dreams come true yes <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys god bless you and i'll um uh, I look forward to hearing the record. Look forward to seeing you guys on tour, maybe when when that comes down the line. So, all right, thanks, all right. guys. Good man, great talking to you. Good yeah. talking to you. All right, then. Have see a good you one. later. Right. See you guys. Okay. Good seeing you. Okay. Yeah. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye, <laughs> Bye everybody. Bye.